So how would I approach uh, people in a tonic mobility versus a shutdown response? And I think what's really important to be aware of is that when somebody's in a shutdown response, they have very high parasympathetic activation and low sympathetic activation. So when somebody is in a collapsed state, I really try to activate their sympathetic nervous system. So I may have them jog in one place or, you know, if this happens at home, if they recognize it early, you know, doing something that increases their heart rate. So this may be, you know, running a few laps. This is maybe doing squats. And it's interesting to note that I think the bodies of individuals who go into these shutdown collapsed responses often find a way of dealing with it and always uh, lets me remember one of my clients who uh, had a severe trauma history as a child and he would go into these collapsed states uh, very easily. But as a way of compensating, he was doing about four to 500 push-ups a day. And this prevented him from going into this, this collapsed state. And when I saw him, he just suffered from a shoulder injury. And of course, having had this shoulder injury prevented him from doing those push-ups. And so he was referred to me because he was frequently found in a fetal collapsed position. And so, you know, what we had to do was we had to help him despite his shoulder injury to really activate his sympathetic or fight-flight nervous system. And as we did that, and as we helped him to engage in exercises that he could engage in despite his shoulder injury and activate his sympathetic nervous system, those collapsed responses subsided. So I think that's how I would work with a collapsed state. In a child, the way to work with a collapsed state, of course, is also to increase arousal. And often kids who go into this collapsed state they benefit from going into these rooms where they have these light balls, these colorful light balls. And it's known actually that light pressure can really help to enhance arousal. And so, yeah, that's another way, especially in kids, how to work with uh, low arousal collapse states. When we work with tonic immobility and freezing, I think this is very different. Deep pressure, may be helpful in a freeze response because it activates uh, a certain part of the spinal cord called the dorsal uh, meniscal system. And this actually uh, connects in the brain with areas that help us to know where we are, that help us to integrate sensory information. And so that may be very helpful to then start to... Uh, engage in movements again. This is again something we still need to study, but we know that the system is involved in deep pressure. And so I think this is something we need to explore further. So another way I often work with people with tonic immobility responses is to use micro movements. And often people go into freezing responses because being seen and having moved in the past was incredibly dangerous. And so having had that tonic immobility response was very adaptive at the time of the trauma. And of course, now we want them to come out of this frozen tonic immobility state. And so we have to do that at a pace that feels safe for the client. And so sometimes I use micro movements. I tell individuals, just to move your finger or your toe, whatever part of your body feels safest, just a micrometer. And often this allows people to then, you know, slowly engage in movement again, and then over time, as they feel safe, enlarge that movement until they can move their limbs fully. So when I work with a freezing or a tonic immobility response, my goal is to get the individual moving, either the whole body, if the whole body is frozen, or part of the body, or the intercostal muscles, if the breath is frozen and very shallow, or the gaze, if the gaze is frozen. So yeah, the whole goal with tonic immobility is to get that part of the body moving again. When you work with uh, collapse or shutdown, the goal is to activate. 
to activate the nervous system, to activate the sympathetic, the fight-flight nervous system. 